Now that the war in Helldivers 2 continues to rage on and more and more Helldivers join the fight, the servers remain at, well, capacity, unfortunately. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to go over a new looming threat, a new evil faction that will soon, hopefully, come to Helldivers 2. But first, let's look at a quote from the Arrowhead CEO, the creators of Helldivers 2. They state that the Helldivers 2 roadmap is very out of date in comparison to what we want to do now as the game's stratospheric launch brings new ideas and ambitions to the studio. Helldivers 2 dropped its first live service event. The automatons invaded several of the Helldivers planets, forcing the players to turn away from the terminant fight on the front lines and undertake defensive missions against the automatons. Which in fact leads me to my idea for what the next new faction is going to be. If you guys didn't know, Helldivers 1 actually had three factions outside of Super Earth. Of course, there's the terminants that we know are the bugs, and the automatons were these robot creatures. But there were also the Illuminate. And the Illuminate, hopefully, will be the next new enemy faction that currently comes into the Helldivers 2 universe for us to battle against. The Illuminate, highly sophisticated, their civilization has endured for several hundred thousands of years. They call themselves the Squith. Originally aquatic, these creatures dress in ceremonial robes and have managed to create a vast and extremely complex neural network for space travel. The species have since taken their first tentative steps towards the stars, producing weapons of mass destruction in a large scale of such, and something that the people of Super Earth cannot ignore. And after the events of Helldivers 1, the Helldivers were able to push back the Illuminate and, well, dismantle them and take their technology. That's why now in Helldivers 2 we have such powerful stratagems to call in. But what happened to the Illuminate? Well, according to the Helldivers lore, they weren't completely eradicated. They were just, well, dismantled. Similar to how World War II ended in normal Earth with America and Germany, the Illuminate are no longer able to have any type of military presence and pretty much are spread out now in the galaxy. But this is where I think the Illuminate can actually come back. Let's look at the Automatons. The Automatons just launched an attack against Super Earth and some of its outlier planets. And that made most of the Helldivers fighting against the Terminants to swap over and defend the planets. Yes, this will let the Terminants now grow in numbers, but we'll be able to get back to them. However, I think that this is a misdirected attack. While most of the Helldivers will focus on the defense of the planets, some of the other automatons will now go throughout part of the galaxy and try to find the Illuminate. The automatons are the ones that want to completely destroy Super Earth. So they're going to want to get more powerful weaponry from the Illuminate. Possibly the Illuminate have like manuscripts or some way to make this technology again. So while we fight back on the defense of our planets, the automatons will awaken the Illuminate once again. So let's go over the different enemy types and classes that the Illuminates can technically be. There are five categories according to the Helldivers wiki that existed in the first Helldivers. The first category will be Scout. Inside Scout you have three subsects, Observer, Watcher, and Obsidian Observer. The Observer basically looks like a robotic eyeball and its goal is to just patrol and find the Helldivers and alert itself to its friends. So this scout unit has an advanced cloaking device which makes them near impossible to spot and is believed to be kept the Illuminate civilization under tight watch. These suppressing drones are also used on the battlefield to scout out enemy resistance, to which point they can teleport their more heavily armored warriors. So basically in the gameplay, if this thing sees you, it's gonna teleport enemies immediately to that location. So Helldivers must kill these things on site. They're obviously not too strong. They basically would be like one of those crawling terminage, you shoot them and they die almost instantly. But basically these things would be the equivalent of doing bug breaches. They would immediately signal in the air and enemies will be teleported to your location. It says that they are predominantly found on low to medium level planets. Observers patrol the battlefield while cloaked, following semi-random patterns while searching for Helldivers. Their patrols are more densely clustered around mission objectives and they are also attracted to stratagem beacons. It also says that a melee attack or a single shot from any conventional type weapon can very easily destroy the observers. However, their cloaking ability and small size means Helldivers must be alert and accurate when fighting the Illuminate forces. And these observers will stay at a distance away from the Helldivers, and after they have raised the alarm, will activate their cloak. If the Helldiver moves towards them, they will also move backwards, making them difficult to reach with melee in this state. The second one in the scout class are the Watchers. Watchers are basically very heavily armored versions of observers. They have a shield added for extra protection. These units will basically operate pretty much as 
as observers just with shields. So of course their extra armor and shield grants them the additional time to raise the alarm. But because watchers are shielded and more resilient than observers, they can absorb more damage before being destroyed which in turn grants more time for them to raise the alarm. Their shield also absorbs all damage from the first projectile which makes impact, meaning even very powerful weapons such as the railgun require at least two shots to destroy a watcher. But it does say that players can combat this trait by using shotguns or rapid fire weapons. And also the watcher shield is not conventionally used as it will drop the shield whenever cloaked. So if you do happen to see a silhouette of an invisible watcher you could take it down in one shot still now finally there is the obsidian observer and these ones are pretty much the weaponized version of the watchers they have nanotechnology that's weaponized and added to their scout units and they have crossed a delicate line and showing that they have no problems using their detestable weaponry on a larger scale these things also patrol more densely clustered around mission objectives and they are also attracted to stratagem beacons they still behave like watchers and observers so once they spot a hell diver their main goal is yes to still raise an alarm and have men teleport to your location. The biggest difference for the Obsidian Observer is of course they have shields and they can raise an alarm, but they can also fight back. So moving away from the scout, let's go to the next category, which is the infantry category. The first one being the tripod. It's a three-legged fighting machine under Illuminate Command. Tripods utilize electrostatic technology to subdue and moreover, torture their victims. These robot units are somewhat of a wicked robot counterpart to their aquatic masters. These guys are predominantly found in lower level missions. The tripods teleport onto the battlefield, normally in groups of three to five. So whenever an observer or watcher raises an alarm, these will be the first line of attack. But immediately upon spawning, tripods will move towards players who engage them in combat with their close range electrostatic weapons. And only a few shocks are enough to kill a helldiver. The tripods are relatively slow and a few well-placed shots are usually enough to destroy them. However, their shield absorbs all damage from the first projectile on impact. So just like the other ones, very powerful weapons will still require at least two shots. So even a railgun directly out front where their shooter's up is still not gonna kill them in one shot. And while their shield is up, it says that the tripods are immune to stun, like railguns, stun mines, or stun grenades, as well as the guard dogs. And they also can't be burnt or exploded on first shot. They are also immune to slow. So like static fields or anything like that will not slow them down while their shield is up. Up next is the Hunter. So utilizing stealth and guerrilla tactics, these soldiers use long range, high powered electropulse gauntlets, which vaporize the air at ranges of up to 10 kilometers. The static air is clearly visible to the eye and as such can be avoided before the actual projectile is fired. For the Illuminate, part of their culture, to become a hunter is the first step on the way to becoming an illusionist, which we'll go over soon. Now, these hunters are pretty much found on any planet that has Illuminate presence. They patrol the battlefield actually individually, following semi-random patterns while searching for Helldivers. They patrol more often around mission objectives and are also attracted to stratagem beacons. And there has also been shielded hunters as well, which was pretty scary in Helldivers 1. Now, hunters always seek to engage Helldivers troops in combat from long range using the their sniper-like beam, and the weapon is extremely powerful and can kill a hell diver in one single shot. However, it does take them almost two seconds to fully charge in before they shoot, and the player can see the intended shot that's going to happen before it does. Now, just like everything else in this game, hunters can also technically kill their fellow Illuminate and often accidentally vaporizing them, but hunters can survive up to one blast from another hunter, so don't expect to hide behind them and let them get shot. However, it's still technically possible. Now, the good thing is hunters have no melee attack and will flee from hell divers who get too close so if you're looking to play with a shotgun or just running directly at them that's going to make them well fear you so if you have one hell diver closing the gap while the other one is from a distance shooting them that's the best way to take them out now hunters are also extremely dangerous to your turrets and other types of deployable things that you could put out because they can shoot from beyond the turrets range and it also shoots through things so they can kill multiple hell divers and objective things in a single shot up next is the apprentice a little bit more about their lore, the Illuminate Society is believed to be based on knowledge, and individuals that have attained enough knowledge will eventually become an illusionist, and an apprentice role is the last step before that. So the apprentice are commonly found whenever the Illuminate attacks, so their nano abilities are dangerous and used to incapacitate their targets before moving into melee range to slice up their enemies. And these guys are pretty much found on most Illuminate planets, so anytime there's an Illuminate presence, you're going to find these guys. So once they spawn in, apprentices will normally launch a projectile attack at the player, which severely severely hinders the movement of any Helldiver. 
So this will allow the apprentice time to quickly enter close range combat and engage the players with their powerful melee. But the orbs that they launch can be shot and destroyed. The good thing is if you're using a shield generator pack, it does make the hell divers immune to the slowing effects of the apprentice's projectiles. These guys are actually relatively a small target, but they move very fast. So players must be accurate when targeting them. They're kind of like those hunters from the Terminids and they're only light armor. So, you know, you can dispatch them pretty easily. Then there's the outcasts. So outcasts, are apprentices that tried to attain knowledge but failed. They're shamed by their society for not being able to learn fast enough. Outcasts are forced to fight on the battlefields, draped in a cloaked field and properly armed with only melee weapons. They are the perfect example of how the Illuminate treats its own citizens, forced to fight and die for their lack of knowledge. These guys are also found on most planets with Illuminate presence. The Outcast also teleports into battle and normally in groups of one to three. So whenever there's an observer or watcher and they raise the alarm, you're gonna find these guys. And also immediately upon spawning, Outcasts will seek to enter close range and engage players in combat with their rapid melee attacks. Outcasts glide over terrain very quickly, presenting a small target that are always cloaked, meaning they can be a tricky enemy for players to combat. Fortunately though, they are only very lightly armored and they have no long range capabilities. So as long as players see them and are alert, we can take them out pretty easily. Now the last one in the infantry group is the Strider. These are heavier versions of tripods. The Strider is similarly armed, but with a much tougher armor and shield. Now these guys you'll find on pretty much harder difficulties, probably maybe medium to harden up, but they also teleport to the battlefield, normally in groups of three to five. So anytime an alarm is raised, expect at least three of these guys. They also behave extremely like the tripods immediately upon spawning in. They will move towards the player and engage them in combat with their close range electric weapons. And just one or two shocks is enough to kill a hell diver. Fortunately though, Striders are relatively slow and several well-placed shots is usually enough to destroy them. However, their shield also absorbs damage from the first shot. So once again, things like a rail gun, a spear, anything like that won't be enough to kill them in one hit. Moving on to the third category is tank and there's only one entry in tank and that is an obelisk. The obelisk is a heavily armored and shielded dome capable of self teleportation and projecting a strong energy wall. The wall itself allows other illuminates to pass through but stops everything else. Fortunately, the obelisk exposes its core when projecting the wall and the only defense remaining is its shield. So basically you could have snipers camping behind this wall shooting at you and you need someone to either snipe it from a distance and break that spot or close in past the wall and kill it. Now these guys are also found on medium level plus planets. They also teleport into the battlefield alone though. But once they spawn in, they will immediately cast an energy wall at the nearest player or piece of equipment. And this is a powerful attack that will instantly kill or destroy anything in its path, which happens to be moving through the path at the time. So think like if you're stationary or if you put a turret, it'll pretty much be destroyed or killed instantly. Now the wall also blocks player movement and weapons fire while still allowing the Illuminate forces to move through it or attack hell divers. So think those hunters sniping you through that stuff. But the good thing is actually the lift jump pack allows players to leap over the energy wall directly inside of it. And then of course you could use your stratagems and everything like that to destroy from within. The obelisks also have extremely thick armor, which even anti-tank weapons cannot pierce. So like think the recoilless rifle, but for some reason fire stuff like an incendiary grenade can still kill an obelisk. They drop their armor whenever the obelisk projects its shield. So that's where that core will be, will you also be able to attack. But if the hell divers don't destroy the core quick enough, the obelisk will raise its armor again and potentially teleport to another location. Now moving on to our fourth category is elite and there's two entries in elite. The first one being the illusionist. The illusionists are highly revered among the swift and have the ability to control other sentient beings with nanobot technology. Frontline soldiers have reported hallucinations and ill will to fight and general apathy when fighting these perversive witches. Furthermore, these beings have a shield device similar to the tripods that protects the illusionist. So I, I speculate what can happen. Imagine you die and you're playing either solo or you're playing with your buddies. I wonder if the illusionist can raise a dead body of a hell diver, almost like a zombie, and they could fight <laughs> against you as like a, a possessed hell diver. So these guys are also found on medium plus planets. The illusionists also teleport directly into the battlefield, but they do it alone. So once they do spawn in, they will engage players in combat by launching homing projectiles out of them. And two or three of these projectiles are enough to kill a hell diver. And the orbs also detonate after a short time if they don't hit anything. And that will cause all players caught in the blast area to have their controls temporarily reversed 
So imagine you're trying to run forward and you're pressing W or holding the stick and then you're hit by that, you're immediately walking backwards instead. And also it completely messes you up when you're trying to enter stratagems. The good thing is the players can target the orbs with any type of weapon fire to get rid of them, but the projectiles tend to curve back if dodged. Illusionists can only withstand a moderate amount of punishment and are normally fairly slow. However, they will teleport out of the line of fire after receiving some damage and their projectile attacks absorb some of the weapon fire intended for them. So this combined with their control reversal attacks can make them super dangerous and a resilient foe. As long as their shields are up, the illusionists are immune to things like slow effects, poison, or any type of incendiary and burning. However though, incendiary weapons and stratagems will actually ignite the illusionists once their shields are depleted preventing them from teleporting as long as they're burning. And the last one in the elite class is the council member. The absolute masters of the illuminate race, council members are the ones holding their alien spaghetti-like appendages and their appendages on the WMD trigger. They are very much like illusionists, but with political power and increased protection. So seeing them on the battlefield is like a treat. It's almost like destroying a general. These guys are found on higher difficulty type planets and the council members will actually spawn very infrequently. They teleport into the battlefield alone anytime an observer or watcher raises an alarm. The council members look and behave very much like the illusionists, and just like the illusionists, it almost behaves the same way with the attacks. However, these guys have several other attacks. One is a wide area of effect blast centered on the council member, which will also reverse the player's controls and have very lethal white orb, which can instantly kill an unshielded Helldiver. Council members can also only withstand like a very moderate amount of damage and are also fairly slow. However, they will teleport out of the line of fire after receiving some damage. And also their projectiles can absorb some of the fire for them. And just like the other ones, they're also immune to things like slow, um, ignition from incendiary weapons and poison. However, once their shields are down and you're burning them with any type of incendiary, they are no longer able to teleport. Now, finally is the last class and that's called Master and there's only one entry for that one. And that is called the Great Eye. So the intel suggests that the Illuminate Great Eye to be large AI creatures monitoring the Illuminate Society and correcting any discrepancies in behavior or even thought. The Great Eye is heavily armored and might even hold the keys for their WMD weapons. So it's imperative that these Great Eyes are taken out once the opportunity presents itself. So the Great Eye is usually found on special outlying planets. And based off of the first game could have only been accessed after accumulating around 50 points of influence. So it'd be interesting to see how these guys work in Helldivers 2. Maybe there'll be special missions and operations granted to us because it's a live service type game. Great Eyes are initially supported by several Striders which continually spawn for the majority of the time that you're fighting a Great Eye. And as the Great Eye's health starts to be depleted, some of the Striders are, will be replaced by weaker ones like Apprentices and then Outcasts and then finally Illusionists. So the more damage you do to the Great Eye, the weaker the spawns are. However, unlike the Illusionists and Council members, the Great Eye will launch multiple homing projectiles at a time. So two or three Rember can kill a Helldiver. The Great Eye will also launch batches of the same instantly lethal white orbs that were used by council members. It can sweep its laser cannon in a wide arc, which can also instantly kill a Helldiver, but that laser beam can actually be avoided just by laying down and going prone. And you can also jump over the beam with the jump pack. This thing has a ton of health and will require teamwork to take it down. So that's it for the Illuminate, and that's the breakdown of what they are and the types of enemies that we can hopefully be able to fight. And like I said in the beginning, I speculate that the automatons will reawaken the Illuminate as we try to battle back the automatons on defense. They're gonna search out for the Illuminate and we will soon see them attack us, probably from the northmost region. But who is to say all of this could just be terminated propaganda? Sweet Liberty, no!